This is the poorest country in my Minecraft world, and it's kind of my fault. I'll explain more in this episode of Nations of Minecraft. Hey guys, welcome back to Nations of Minecraft. So today we're talking about Bodom. It's known for being poor, but it actually has some very interesting history because it has a close connection to the old green plateau. Let's go to the map. The Republic of Bodam is located right here in the center east of the world, and it's generally divided up into three regions. It also has the train line, the international train line running right through it. So here, this region is sort of just one big museum because it has part of where the Green Plateau used to be. And this is where most people live. This is where all the towns and cities in the capital are. And this over here is just jungle, and it's not really closed off or anything, it's just that barely anyone lives there. So in this main region, this is where all the towns are, and most of them are kind of like ghettos. They're fenced off, and they're full of very crowded small houses. And uh, this is just closed off to most people, and it's where the uh, Green Plateau used to be, at least part of it. I mean, most of the Green Plateau is right now in Manplatten over here. But this has some of it. And this is the jungle. It has a very beautiful sort of border between the jungle and the desert. You can see a little bit of the desert here. Anyway, so these are the biomes. Most of Bodam is desert. There's a plateau biome. There are a few palm groves, although they're mostly dried up by now. There's some badlands over here, just a little bit. And there's the jungle, and there's a river right here. And the river actually runs to the International Jungle Trade Center in the country of Kaulia. And they're uh, in the process of constructing a port on this river, which should help improve their economy, hopefully. So this is a population map. Once again, almost everyone lives in this region, concentrated in the, these cities and the castle. So this is a temperature map. As always, uh, like hot and humid is this red color. So uh, the hue indicates the temperature, and the saturation indicates the humidity. A uh, bit north, this is just the jungles, hot and humid. This is hot and dry because it's the desert. And a bit north of that is warm and dry, not quite as hot, uh, in the very far northern tip. So this is a language map. Most people speak Vershin. Vershin is uh, the language around here. And there are a few people in the jungle who speak Kalian. Kalian is the language of Kalia, this country right here. There's a few minorities here who speak that. But generally, people speak Vershin, and these other two countries also mostly speak Vershin as well. So these three countries have a long history together, which we'll discuss later. And this whole region is sometimes known as Versha, but this particular country is Bodan. So Versha is one of the many Distant-based languages. All of this area was once ruled by the Navaka Empire, which spoke the language Distant. Navaka Empire, some people consider it a successor to the Distan Empire, which also ruled this whole region, and that's where the language Distan comes from. So the language Vershin, indicated by the color similarity, is descended from the Distan languages, as many of these languages are. So, here's and now time for history. Now this is a picture, a map, of the old Green Plateau. So there were many provinces, and this over here was the Green Plateau Capital District. This was the plateau itself. These were all the provinces. Now, um, what happened was during the Civil War, this region of the Green Plateau Territory got bombed really bad. This is a video from when this part was bombed. Because the Civil War, uh, we bombed each other and this part got hit the hardest. And this is where it's kind of my fault. Because I didn't bother to repair this region. What I did was I kind of just cut this whole region off from the rest of the Green Plateau, because I didn't want my homeland, which is the Green Plateau, to be full of craters and stuff. So, yeah, I kind of cut this region off, and I asked, like, Navaket if they wanted it, they didn't want it. So, yeah, the status of this region was kind of undetermined. So what we ended up doing was we made it into a province known as Exaversha. That's where the name Versha comes from. But the province didn't have anyone running it. It was only a province in name. So what this means is exo means like out of in like Latin or Greek, one of those smart languages. And versha means 
like the Greenland, because Vert means green in like a lot of Romance languages. Vert is like the Greenland. So what Ex Aversa really means is out of the Greenland, the land that was taken out of the Green Plateau. So later the Green Plateau fell apart, and the land was divided between many empires, including the Empire of Navaket, which took over um, Ex Aversa. Now, since Ex Aversa never had anyone running it, it never developed any industry. So, Navaket did what they thought was the compassionate thing by just continually sending, for, like, aid and uh, money to Ex Aversa, but it still kind of trapped them in poverty because they never actually um, learned to develop an economy of their own. They were just relying on aid. So, Navaket thought they were helping, they kind of weren't. Now, um, eventually, so yeah, this is the region of Ex Aversa in Navaket. They thought they were helping. They weren't. So, eventually, Navaket, just like the Green Plateau, started to uh, fall apart. It started when it split itself into different regions that sort of ran themselves a bit more. And uh, Ex Aversha, which was starting to just be called Versha for short, was one of the regions. And uh, they started to not like the government so much because the government was giving them money, but they didn't consider it enough. So, um, eventually, this region, uh, Ravinia, actually fought a little bit of a war to break free from the Navaka Empire. So, in the chaos, Versha slipped away too. They were led by this crazy leader uh, over here named Dramvo. Now, he was quite an interesting guy. He ran that, that castle that you saw. He ran this castle the, that's called the Castle of Bodam, which is where the country Bodam gets its name. And he promised the citizens that he would redistribute all the wealth, and he would basically make Versha completely independent from Navaka, and they would finally uh, run their own mining economy. But it was discovered that um, Dramvo was hoarding all the wealth for himself, so uh, people started to get very suspicious of him when they found out that he wasn't going to help them at all. They executed him, and then once they got rid of their leader, the country was in anarchy, total anarchy, for about a year. No one was running it. And then uh, some people decided they needed to organize some sort of a government because it was just total chaos. So they did organize a government, actually two governments. So one government was organized in the castle of Bodam, which was uh, Dramvo's castle, Another government was organized here in Times Cube, which was more of a, an administrative city. So nobody knew which government that should become the, the next government. There was one here and one here. So they didn't want to fight another war, so they just had a council to decide, you know, which government should be the right one, and they couldn't agree on which one, so they decided to split the land. And when they decided that, this region, Lonia, decided they didn't want any part of it, so they just left. Um... And then it was left between these two. They split it. And, yeah, uh, this became Bodam, and this became Tibwig. So, yeah, now Bodam is independent. And, yeah, so we'll talk more about why they're still kind of trapped in poverty. So now, some notable spots you might want to visit if you end up going here include the Castle of Bodam. This is the capital castle. This is the flag of Bodam. There's Parpareb, this village in the uh, palm grove, although the palm trees are mostly dead, as you can see. There's the Nichesso River Port. We talked about that river earlier. This is actually one of the, uh, the towns that's a bit better off than the others. Uh, and there's this big aqueduct that supplies a lot of the water from the country. There's this beautiful place called the Ideas Monument. I actually built this back when this was part of the Green Plateau. This is part of the Green Plateau Museum. It's a light bulb, because it symbolizes ideas. So yeah, it's a really cool place. And just visit the jungle if you get a chance. The whole jungle, all Minecraft jungles, in my opinion, are beautiful. And it's especially beautiful in Bodam, because there's sort of like a mixture between jungle and desert. You can see the border between them. So I think that's really cool. Now, in Bodam, the, it's a bit hard to get there, because the train goes through it, but doesn't actually stop in it. It just hovers over the whole country. So if you do want to go to Bodam, you should probably go up here to Tibwig, where the train does stop, and it's not that far of a walk down into Bodam. So, now, let's talk about why this country is still kind of poor. So, uh, that has to do with their foreign relations. So, uh, the country Turaman 
gives them money in exchange for mining rights. So Turman, which is a mostly mining-based economy, gets to mine in Bodam, and in exchange, they give them some of their money. Now, the government is supposed to redistribute the money to the citizens, but the government's kind of corrupt. It doesn't do that very well. And once again, if you give a lot of people money, then they're not going to develop uh, industry of their own. So Bodam doesn't have much of an economy. It just... Uh, Sell, they just sell their own land and resources to Turman, and as a result, they're not even utilizing their own resources. So yeah, that doesn't really help. Now, Genesis sends a little bit of aid to Bodam, and they appreciate it, but some of them see it as patronizing, and it's it's a little bit awkward. So the countries of Manplatin and Kaulia, although Manplatin does kind of give them some revenue by managing the Green Plateau Museum, they're kind of unfriendly. They, like, built these big fences preventing Bodam citizens from, like, going to these countries because they see them as just stinky poor people. So Bodam doesn't really like these guys. And uh, so, yeah, their best friends would probably be Tibwig. They have a long history together, and even though they couldn't end up becoming the same country, they still really understand each other. They speak the same language. And, yeah, they were used to be part of the same country. Now, Tibwig is a little bit better off than Bodam, so Bodam sometimes resents them. But, yeah, overall, Tibwig is their best friend. So, yeah, there's a lot more to Bodam than just being the poor country. It's got some awesome history, and hopefully someday it can improve. Stay tuned. Kanaya is coming up next. <laughs>